Candy canes. Santa's walking stick. A staple in Christmas delight. Let's make some. To begin, Santa's elves start by collecting a pile of reindeer semen, eggnog, and melted Christmas light bulbs. They then take some snow and mix them with egg yolks. That's why they say, don't eat the yellow snow, because they need it. Oh sugar, also sugar. I forgot the sugar, my apologies. The yellow snow then gets poured on top the mixture of reindeer children blueprints to be placed inside of a large game of Hungry Hungry Crush, the hippos. This instills the feeling of thrill that is needed to enjoy a nice Christmas joyride with Santa Claus. If your grandma is resentful, don't invite her. Once the mixture looks like a genetically modified blobfish, the machine begins to poke it some more to make sure it is dead. It's now time for the next step. They place the candy into two spinning pole things that stretch the candy until it loses oxygen, giving it a ghostly color. Dog, what the f this thing is alive. Bro, look at it. It got veins in it. Junk looks like anti venom. Oh, wait, never mind. It has to sit for a while, so the camera cuts to three days later. The elves then roll the mixture into a log, long enough to serve as a trunk for an outdoor Christmas tree decoration. After killing the employees at a residential Christmas decorator shop for refusing some candy for decoration like a smart person, they use the remains of the dead bodies to make this long red thing. They check for any imperfections as it can mess with the candy cane's final form. This red stuff gets stretched and folded onto the candy. Making the world's largest dog treat, perfect for the holidays. If you got no dogs, no big deal, thanks to recycling. They throw the end results into a garbage compactor to shape it into a little treat that we call, candy canes. The imprints on the candy is for filtering air, so in case of emergencies, it can have spare oxygen to breathe. That is not supposed to be on fire. Knowing this, the candy uses up all the oxygen in a brief moment of panic. As a gesture of respect for the craft, the candy canes wave goodbye to the elves as they know their explosive fate awaits. And just like your local weather station, it was all just a false alarm. The factory uses shavings of nutcracker mustache hair to calm down the candy by gently rubbing it, ensuring that everything is fine. But it's too late, as the trauma crippled the candy into long pieces already. So if your candy cane breaks out of nowhere, comfort it with a gentle drowning in hot chocolate. The next step is to quickly race to wrap the candy before it dries because they get stale and bone dry faster when they are broken. This is a heating device, which heats up the candy inside the wrapping, to troll it. That beat drop you just heard, helps. A machine called a deboner, debones the candy cane into a hook. Please consult your general practitioner. How in the jolly big f is this one yellow? After several minutes of ear-shattering screams from the boss to hurry up the process, thinking that's how time works, the candy canes are now complete and ready for your cozy cup of hot chocolate.